Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, today I'm going to be reviewing this brand new drone from Holy Stone. This is the HS280. Now, this is just a little brush powered, you know, entry level drone. It doesn't have GPS or optical flow or anything fancy like that. So, I'm just going to do a quick overview of the drone here, just using my head cam. A little different than usual while you do a table review, but I don't think this really warrants a table review. Then we'll get outside and fly this guy and see how the footage looks. Now, I did a little test here in my house, and the camera looked really, really good. It shoots in 1080p at 20 five frames per second but there was some really bad lag or latency in the app at times especially oddly enough if i was recording video because this drone doesn't have a micro sd card so you're recording over that wi-fi feed in your phone and of course that's less than ideal but you see that a lot of times on these entry level drones uh, it shows you here on the side of the box some of the uh, uh, info about it hd camera has a modular style battery has hand gestures in the app, which we probably won't test that out. That's really a flaky feature in all these drones, and it's hard to get it to work. And a high and low speed. So you can see, very limited feature. So enough of that. Here is the drone. It is foldable. They probably should have advertised that because even though that's pretty standard nowadays, it is nice because look how compact that is in my hand. It's about the size of a, a the Mavic uh, Mini over there I have on the shelf or the Femi X8 Mini. But this is going to be well under uh, 250 grams. In fact, if I grab my scale here, we'll just go ahead and weigh it. It's not going to weigh much. Let me just grab my scale. And I'll put it on here. You're probably not going to be able to see this because of my head cam. But I'm going to put it down here and try to aim down. It's 154 grams. So if that doesn't show up in my head cam, you have to take my word for it. It's very, very lightweight. So you don't have to worry about any FAA uh regulations in the united states this won't require any identification on it but you still have to abide by the rules of safe flight here in the united states so enough of that let's go ahead and show you it fold it out fold out the front arms first and then the rear and your battery is back here you push this little tab and pull it out if i can get it it has a led here in the rear which i'll show you guys in a moment as well this is a 1s lipo that is 1300 milliamp it's really hard to read that 1300 i believe i'll lower it down yeah 1300 it's hard to read a fine print at my age but it's 3.85 volts that means this is actually a lithium polymer or lipo high voltage battery so it's a little more oomph to it and that's kind of nice now they give you two of these which i'll show you guys here in the packaging here in just a moment you can actually see in that blue the little lipo battery just sitting inside this little sort of proprietary battery. They give you another one of these, so you get two of these whenever you buy it. You also get a full set, I, I picked up three, let me grab the fourth one. You get four full set of clockwise and counterclockwise, so two of each uh, extra propellers. Here is a charging cable for that battery. It will slide on like this, and then it fits into those little prongs, and that's how you charge it, like that. And the light comes on and goes off whenever it's fully charged, so you know that it's all finished. But back to the drone, we'll turn it on here in a second so you guys can see the lights. The battery I have in here is fully charged. It has a uh, field of view of 65 degrees, some information there about the camera. Again, there's no SD card slot. And inside of here, you can see a spot where you could see where they might put a slot at some point. It's hard to see because of the glare there but there isn't one in this drone. But probably the neatest thing about this drone, I probably should have mentioned it earlier in this uh, overview, is this is a motorized camera. Maybe you'll be able to hear here. The air conditioner's going, so it's kind of going to wash the sound out, but it's kind of hard to hear, but there's a little motorized servo in there. And you can control that with the controller. It's going to be jerky. It's not as smooth. It's going you know, to go up and down. But that means if you take off of this drone, fly out and decide, hey, I want to look down at the roof of my house or something. You don't have to land it and then manually tilt the camera and take back off. You're going to be able to tilt it down and back up. And that's really, really, really nice. You don't see motorized cameras on these toy gray drones very often. But keep in mind, you're over Wi-Fi. There's going to be a lot of lag. At times on my phone, the lag was horrendous. And at other times, the lag was not bad at all. It seemed like if I was recording video to the in the app, you know, it's such a, that's how you record the uh, feed that it's just, it just was really laggy at times. And at times the app would partially crash. 
come back to the main screen, you enter back in and then it doesn't know it's recording or not. And then it gets mixed up and the lights will be flashing, but the app will say it's not recording. And it gets really in, when the app crashes and comes back in, then it was a lot, lot less lag, which is also really, really strange. So I'm gonna use screen recording. That way we can see the video from this, that you will see the app icons and such and the battery meter and that. That way we can be assured as long as I have the app open into the video feed, it doesn't crash back to the main menu and I don't notice it, then we'll be able to see the video feed and not to worry about the app messing up and then my recording getting lost and we don't have any footage. And let's look at the, uh, let's look at the uh, controller. Here it comes with this little cardboard insert and here we'll pull out that has all your uh, buttons labeled. You have your video record, your photo, and this is your camera up and your camera down which I'm sure I'll get mixed up with when I'm outside, which one's which. And of course your basic controls here, it does have altitude hold, your power button. Then you flip this up, you can pull this piece out. But this is where you have your takeoff and landing, auto takeoff and landing. Uh, that's also in the app, it has that feature as well. Your speed switch, which I assume there's, it says high and low, but there's just two speeds. And a headless mode if you need to fly without needing to know orientation. Get your little handle grips that pull out. And of course your phone goes right here there's also a few little screws in here in case you lose your screws to the propellers and they give you a phillips screwdriver to since this is really small to be able to do that stuff and the app which i keep mentioning is the holy stone fpv v4 i'll put a screenshot from the app uh, the google play store same name if you get it from the ios for the uh app store for apple so it's a Holy Stone or HS FPV V4. I guess that means version four for this little drone. So that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot to uh, to cover. Besides that, the power button's right here. It kind of just pushes in this whole panel and then it lights up. And let's go ahead and power it up so I can show you guys those LEDs. Green in the rear and this is flashing now. It looks like white, I think. It could be a hint of blue on the front. So that's for your orientation. Of course, in the daytime, those little LEDs are going to be sort of hard to see, but that's important whenever you're flying, especially if you don't have the video feed connected to be able to see which way you're facing. All right, guys, that's enough here of the uh, blabbing about the overview of this drone. Let's get outside now and fly this drone and see how it, how it performs. So I'll be right back. Okay, guys, as you can see, I got the drone here just barely into my garage because I wanted a level surface so I could do that gyro calibration. Now, the gyro calibration I didn't mention in the table uh, review portion earlier is both sticks down to the right. You have to kind of get it just in the right spot on your uh, con controller. And there you can see it flashing. That means that gyro calibration is complete. We've set it to level. That way it shouldn't drift as much except for just a little drift that gets with the wind. And let's go ahead and do the um, auto takeoff. And let's see how the, if this go ahead and takes off if we have to unlock the props. So let's press the auto takeoff, and that's not doing anything. So let's go ahead and unlock the props, both sticks down and in. Now let's press the auto takeoff. There we go. Sometimes they will unlock the prop, and sometimes these drones you have to actually do the uh, unlock first. That's the lowest rate, and you can see even with the light breeze at 150 grams, it is struggling a little bit at times. So let's go ahead and whoa let's go ahead and get it up into a higher rate so i'm going to press the middle button and now we should have more uh pitch and be able to fight that breeze more let's make sure there's not three rates no one and one two i can see we still got the video feed going there and it doesn't seem to be as laggy so that's something you might want to consider when you're doing this is you might want to uh just do a screen recording if the app's giving you a lot of lag issues and such. It is not windy today at all. But a little bit of breeze, it does fight the breeze a little bit. It's struggling it with it a little bit. There we go. Just wanted to get out here and you want to just keep, you don't want to watch me just sit there and float around. Uh, in one spot, I wanted to actually get it out and open it up. It's pretty, it's pretty sporty. You can hear the brush motors. They're, um, you know, they're geared. So there's a bit of noise. 
as you expect, unless it's direct driven. Some of the small drones will have the prop sitting right on top of the motors, and those are really efficient and very uh, quiet. But they only, you know, they can't do that on just any drone. It depends on how the RPMs and such that they need. So the app's still doing good. If we do end up getting to a point here where the app, for some reason, go back to that main screen like it was doing to me when I was testing earlier, then uh, I'll, you know, apologize that we end up with just a uh, main menu screen there. But I'm glancing down there because you can't really fly these drones by FPV. If you're not looking at the drone, you're going to crash it because of the lag. So even though they say you're flying first-person view, you're just basically um, uh, using that to frame a shot or something. Because even though I'm filming video now, um, we could probably try to take a photo since I'm doing a stream recording. And Because photos are going to be what this drone's going to be a little more realistic about. Now let's test that camera tilt. We don't want to miss doing that. So let's see if we can do it was uh let's see as this go down let's let's get it here and be still you can do down and i think that's down yeah now we're looking at the road see let's turn it back and see all right flip it around here so we don't crash into the house we're filming down at the ground now let's go back up there's a bit of lag as I'm pressing that front, waiting for it to, to show up again. Now we're uh, looking forward. But since it doesn't have GPS or any, even optical flow, you know, it's trying to frame a shot is not easy. So I'm backing it up here and see if we can bring it over. And uh, I just want to see if I can lower the camera a little bit here. There we go, see? have to come back up a little bit. I mean, it's difficult because the drone is just drifting with the breeze. I'm trying to take it back here. There you go. You guys can see me. So let's see if we can get the drone back up, uh, the camera back up. So yeah, the motorized tilt is a nice feature. If you're just looking to get a beginner's drone, and you want to be able to get some photos or something. Let's try that. Let's take it up here. Make sure we're looking out. Let's just take a, uh, a photo. Make sure I get the right button. Wait for it to get still. And that's a nice thing with the screen recording going. You can then get a photo and not have to worry about stopping your recording. Even though the, the manual mentions the photos are also just 1080p. So they are just essentially a video still. They're not a higher resolution image than what the video camera is recording. So keep that in mind. Now there's no, there's no um, 360 flips on this drone. Uh, some people like those. For me, a camera drone that does 360 flips is kind of pointless <laughs> because you don't, I mean, who wants to record a flip if you're trying to get some photography, you know? Take it up this way and see if we can get a photo up this way. Just kind of try to back it over. I'm just kind of try to let it kind of float with the breeze, and that way we don't have to give it as much pitch and make that'll make the, the uh, picture tilted. So you can st it's still tilted because you know there's no stabilization. You have to keep that in mind, guys. That this this drone has no image stabilization, not even EIS, which is electronic image stabilization. So it's gonna rock and it's gonna tilt and it's gonna look like you're filming it on a boat on the ocean on a choppy day. But that's just what you're gonna get with this. But it flies great. It flies really, really good. And it seems like we're getting a pretty good flight time so far. I don't know, you know, it's gonna be hard to see. I think it's like we got half battery on the app so the telemetry data tells you what the uh, drone's battery is and that's nice very smooth flyer i really like how this flies pretty impressed with it. i mean in terms of the camera i mean we're not gonna we can't expect much from that but the drone itself the way it flies is really good now we are back to the main screen so you see that guys right there in the video 
the app did sort of halfway crash. Now, we went quite a long time before that happened. Let's go ahead back in. And there, I did I'll wait for the noise. A lot, of, a lot of car noise. But yeah, it, the nice thing is at least it doesn't crash completely and you end up having to reset everything. You just press enter and back you're in, you're in. But that's a problem if you're recording. The app may become confused and then not know if you're recording video or not at the time and that end up causing you to possibly lose your video. Well, that's pretty sporty. The wind is sort of coming towards me right now, but there must be a bit of a breeze that's back. Cause see, it's going slow. That's full pitch there in the highest rate, but watch whenever I, at least while I go, when if I go this way, but look at, look at that, it's zipping along. Very smooth flyer. I really like where this flies. So just keep in mind, the app at times, at least on Android, and it may not do it on your particular version of Android, and it may not do it on iPhone at all, will tend to at times crash, partially crash back into the main screen. The app itself doesn't completely crash, so that's a good thing. I've had many apps over the years, and I've been doing this six years, that will uh, crash completely, and then when you get back into the app, the video feed won't reestablish and you have to essentially land the drone, sometimes recycle the power to the drone, and then reconnect to the Wi-Fi, and then open the app, sometimes even restart your phone. It's a real dilemma. And this one's not done that to me. It would just go back to that main screen. As you see, it's just done it once. That's why I suggested a screen recording. Of course, you've got to catch it either way. Um, and enter back in so you continue that video feed. But this way, at least it, the lag doesn't seem as bad um, because, you know, you're, for some reason, when I'm recording with the app itself, whatever it's doing, it's creating a lot more lag in the feed. Your phone's doing more, but in my phone's doing the same right now, recording, uh, screen recording. But it seems like it's just the app itself is doing that, and it's just, you know, it struggles at times. So, Oop. that's where I got my orientation mixed up and almost flew into the neighbor's house. Thought I was facing towards me, I was facing away. A little trick you learn as you uh, fly as many years as me is, you know, the size of the drone as you go away or towards you will obviously increase and decrease. You can sometimes determine your orientation because the Wi-Fi feed is very difficult to see in the glare of the midday summer sun. And those LEDs are impossible to see that far away. I can see them up to about right there. Now my brightness on my phone is not all the way max. I'd say it's about 90%, but it, the phone gets very warm when you do this screen recording. And with max brightness, my phone, and it's doing it right now, it's shutting down. My phone got too hot. Hopefully we got the video there, guys, uh, from the screen recording, I'm hoping because my phone's gotten too warm it shut itself down all right guys we got a flashing light that means that the uh that the drone is uh low battery but since we don't have any more screen recording uh going which i was worried that my phone might use i'm standing out in the blazing hot sun i'm recording a screen recording that's using processing power and the brightness was up considerable it's funny that i said that right when the phone did that because i couldn't see the warning but there's obviously a warm temperature warning on my on my uh, screen but hopefully that screen recording did not corrupt and if so we'll put that on the uh in this video of course if not then i won't be showing this video to you <laughs> i'll have to refilm it all right guys that wraps up the review for this little holy stone overall i really like it it flies great apps a little flaky at times and if you're out in the middle of a hot day like me where it's in the 90s your phone may just overheat, but that's unrelated to Holy Stone. If you're interested in this, I have a, a product link to it. If I have any coupons, I'll include that. They usually have a clippable coupon on Amazon site. They may or may not. Lots of times they will give me a separate coupon that I will include. And if so, I'll put that down in the video description and in the pinned comment. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing while you're at it. Click that bell, that way you're notified every time I do upload a new video. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day. The power of the dark side, 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 side.